Hi, it's Comp397, and we're back. And it's um, Web Game Programming, Week 6, Lesson 6, Part 2. And what we're talking about today, we just previous video we talked about next uh, the test that's due next week. We're going to start doing it. Um, now we're going to get into a little bit more about your slot machine and everything else. We're going to review a couple of things we did last week uh, in terms of modules and all those kind of things. Uh, I kind of put together a little calculator example. Remember I was showing you how to put together the calculator for the buttons. And we also use that <clears throat> as a good excuse to talk about classes and objects, right? So you should know a little bit about classes and objects as you move, as you roll forward. Okay. <clears throat> so a couple of things we need for, for slot machine. Let's start this together. If you haven't slot started your slot machine, let's start it now. Okay, so how, what do we start? How do we, the one thing people always ask me is, Tom, I don't know where to start, <laughs> right? Okay, let's pu pull up the, uh, the, um, the document that you need. So when you go to assignment number two, remember that your slot machine document <clears throat> has instructions. And again, you may not be used to the way I do your, uh, your slot machine stuff. Now it's due Friday, June 19th, that's next week at midnight, it's worth 10%. Um, so let's take a look at this thing. <clears throat> so we need to put a spin button for the slot machine to work. That's one thing we need, I, I just say it. So I have three images, that's the first thing, to the UI, right? One for each reel. Well, if you remember the slot machine, the example of the slot machine from last week, and if I was to go in there and kick it off, right, what do we start with? <clears throat> we start with this. This is the code that you guys can start off with. And you can download it from my GitHub or fork me on GitHub, whatever you like, right? I'm just going to kick it off so you see it. So this is, the, this is the code that you get. Now it's basic JavaScript code. You can't use this, this uh, project to start it off because this project is not a CreateJS project. You can take the code from the project, this JavaScript code, and incorporate it within your own code to make it work. That's what you need to do, right? So that's the first thing to understand. Let's take a look at what it does again. So when I run this thing, it just makes so that a, it runs um, your basic HTML version of the slot machine, which is there's no graphics, there's really only one button that's a spin, and when I click the spin button, I have a minimum bet of 10, 10 credits. And I click the spin button, it keeps on spinning. And depending on what I get, the combination down here, like banana, orange, and cherry, I won 10 bucks, right? Because I, you know, it's kind of a one to one here. And then it tells you, I just give you some statistics to see that it works. I've got a, a win ratio of 22.22% in this particular case because I've got two wins and, you know, a bunch of losses. This should kind of flow into the, uh, um, you know, it's pretty low, like 10% is a good ratio. Um, you'll see though that I've, I've skewed all my, result, all my results so that you win a little bit more often. So it's like 20%, right? But truly, uh, most times people only, work, only win between 5 and 10%. That's the, the real uh, level of winnings in, in a real casino, right? Because, you know, you put a lot more credits in and then, you know, you might win. So this area here that I'm floating into, the 15% now, it's not bad. It's kind of representational. But if you notice, there's 13 wins and 60 losses. So if you were going to play this, you can see how my player money comes down. I've lost, you know, uh, 200 credits or whatever it is right now. You have to play a lot and have a lot of credits to play in order for you to have a chance to win. This is kind of representational of the real slot machine. If you notice, I can keep spinning this thing forever and ever. Your real slot machine can't function this way. Remember, the real slot machine you take the code from this one that I gave you and combine it with CreateJS, that library, and your UI, which we have to build today, right? In order for you to, uh, uh, you know, kind of put these things together. So let's take a look at my next version again, just one version up to show you how it spins and everything else. And again, there's no spinning, right? Because the slot machine just flashes up the images, right? That's all it does. And that's all you're expected to do. To get full marks, right? As long as the images swap change when you press the, the spin button and you have some credit, like the, you meet the criteria of the, of the uh, assignment, you're good to go. You do not need 
sound. You do not need those things. I put them in as bonuses. So if you want to create, use CreateJS, the sound JS piece, you can certainly do that. That's pretty darn loud. Let's turn that right down. All right. So you see there's my slot machine. And if you notice, um, my slot machine is just a graphic, right? I've got a reset button here and another, we talked about buttons last week. All these are just buttons that have a transparent background, so they work on the slot machine graphic, right? I can't bet right now. If I bet, if you notice, I, if I hover over the, the credit, I have, I have this, my uh, cursor changes to this can't do it, right? Even if I click, it won't allow me to. Why? I've got no bet right now in the, uh, in the zone here. I have to bet something like 25 credits. Makes a little bit of a sound. Now, if you notice my spin changes, I can actually bet now. If I click on this thing, I have a little bit of a sound, and then, oh, blanks. Okay, so I got nothing. Let's try it again. And my bet stays. My bet doesn't get wiped away. The minimum bet that I put in there stays. And as it works in the real world, you have to you can change it. If I want to go to a hundred, I can do that too. And then it takes away from my money, which is here. I start with a thousand credits. Right? Oh, but I still lost because I got a blank, right? At least I got a couple of symbols, right? Now there is no motion here. There's nothing that tells you that these wheels are spinning because, again, that would be for bonus. If you wanted to, to make it so that the wheels were spinning or somehow animate, I'd give you some kind of a bonus for that. I'm not teaching you how to do that, and I don't expect you to do that at this particular stage, but, uh, you know, if you do it, great. So if I'm going to keep spinning, I'm going to still, you know, still play all my money. I got a couple symbols, but you see I haven't won yet. Oh, that's the first time. That's not bad. I actually won 200 credits. So that's a pretty good win because I got a couple bananas. <laughs> bananas! Um, and I won again, another couple hundred credits, right? So I'm getting, I'm getting a little higher, right? Now I lost again, right? I just want to keep doing that a couple bananas, yeah. I'm going to keep doing that until I get to... That's unusual. I'm going to get to, uh, you know, uh, and no, don't tell me to go to, this, to, the, to the real slots because I've, I've told you, I, I've, I've jinked, I've made this so that you can win more often, right? To show you that it works. Otherwise, we're going to see blanks, right? That's not good. But in the real world, you can spin as much as you want. You're going to, you go in with 20 bucks, you're going to lose 20 bucks. You know, if you're lucky, you might get a couple a couple of bucks out of it. Long-term, life-term, lifetime, right? Gamblers, at the end of the day, the, the, uh, uh, the casinos are made to make money, not to give you money, right? So if you go there thinking you're going to win, statistically, as computer scientists like we are, right, we have to understand the statistics are against you, right? Oh, man, why? Because I don't have enough money, right? I've lost all my money, so I made that little ugly sound. Let's try that again. Watch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it tells me there's a little pop-up that says, hey, you know what? Um, you don't have enough money to place that bet. So what do I need to do? I can lower my bet. Right now, I have a little bit more money because my bet is less than my total credits. Right, and if I spin, I'm down to this. I've tried again, it's going to give me that sound again. Right, there we go. And if I go down to 25 credits, now I'll bet everything. Watch me win. See, bet okay, good. Now I have zero money. If I try to bet, right, as an example, it says, Hey, I ran out of money. Right, I'm in trouble. Right, what do I do now? I can, do you want to play again? If I say, okay, this is like my reset. It'll reset me back to a thousand credits. Um, and I'll start off, I, I, my, my jackpot also gets reset. Right? So the whole game resets and I can play it again, right? I can also always press the reset button. That's how it works, right? So from a functionality perspective also, this, this is my power off button. I can power it off and see you later. I don't need that sound anymore, right? So really that's, where I went with it, I have sounds. These are extras that I have in there, right? Some sounds um, that are going to give you a bonus. I have a soundtrack that kind of goes in the background that makes it sound like you're in a casino, which is really annoying because you hear those kind of a, a casino sounds in the real world, right? You actually go in there and bing, 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 bing. You always sound like things like people winning, people losing, people going, hey, you know, and but meanwhile, they've lost, you know. <laughs> the last 10 times they were there, they lost, but this time they won a little bit so they feel good. Like they're going to come back again, right? Um, Again, so if you think about it, um, that's what this this is a simulation of a casino game slot machine, right? Okay, cool. So so again, this is the bonuses. And if you notice also um, in my project that I have here, and, and this is the one I've, I've kind of shown you, right? Um, 
my JavaScript library, I have my libraries, but I haven't broke it out into, I didn't break it out into modules. So as I go down the path, right, and I, I, I go to the next level, my next version, and I'm using GitHub for this, of course, right? So I go to my next version on my slot machine. That has the, the wheel spinning. And my final version, if I was to look at this thing, so let's just look at my final version, right, again. And I, I, the only way I can build up these final versions, right, is that wh what I'm doing is, um, and the only way I can do this, by the way, is if I get to the point where I'm, my, my, my initial version is functioning before I get to the next version. I can't go from version 1 to version 2 if version 1 doesn't work, right? So version 1 has to work. You have to make it go. Now, if you notice version 2, or this final version, I have, I've separated my stuff out in objects. So here's my object, my bet buttons. Um, I have my button uh, a class as well. I also have uh, a, something called a game object and a label. So the same things we talked about last time. I also have some other things. Managers. I have an asset manager, which we're going to talk about today. How to, how to, how to create an asset manager uh, as a separate class, as opposed to well, the way we've been doing it so far, right? The other thing I have from an asset perspective, I have images, and I also use a texture atlas, which we're also going to be talking about today. How do I use a sprite sheet as opposed to 20 images? <laughs> I only need one, really, at the end of the day, or two. So we'll talk about that a little bit again. How do I do that? Right? So this is the final version, and that's why it has a few extra things. So when I run this one, you're going to see, I'm just going to re refresh this one a little bit. If you notice now, I've got my, all my images like I showed you guys last time. I still got the same mechanic. So when I say the mechanic, the way the functionality is, I still got my, my jackpot here, my total credits, my bet, my winner pay. These are the, the labels that I have. It looks like they're part of the game, but actually they're just text labels that are layered on top of my slot machine graphic. That's what I, that's the trick, right? And in here, each of these reels are actually um, containers. They're separate containers, almost like my little uh, smaller uh, stages, if you will, that allow these fruits to kind of fall in. So it looks like it's all tricks. Games are all tricks, right? Illusions. It looks like the fruits are moving down, like they're dropping down, but actually they've, they've been there the whole time. When I generate it off screen, I'm generating the fruit and I'm pulling it down a number of times until the final version, right? until they come down to the, to the bed line. So when I bet now, same mechanic, if I bet my money, right, the fruits appear to move, but really they're not moving, right? I mean, I'm just making them just uh, uh, move down. They look like they're animating around the wheels, but they're not, right? Now, I don't expect you guys to get there. I don't expect you guys to make this. This is all the bonus stuff that you can, I'm just giving you ideas if you, if you wanted to get to the bonus piece. The piece that I need you to figure out is how do I wire up and follow the uh, follow the instructions. How do I wire up my UI, my user interface, with the logic that I've provided for you? Right? How do I do that? That's the question. So in order for you to do that, we do something similar to what we did with that little calculator I was building last week and the week before. Right? We built buttons. We have to make classes for the buttons where we have those things. Right? And we have to build up the user interface first. That's the first thing we need to do. Okay? Okay, so let's do that. So I'd like you to go to, here's where we start off now. I, I'd like you to go to, um, if I go to Google and if I look at images and I put in slot machine graphic, search for slot machine graphic, you're going to see a bunch of different slot machine graphics out there. <clears throat> let's talk about what's suitable and what's not, okay? If you notice here, right, there's a bunch of them that are very similar. One, two, three. These first three are very similar. And my question to you is, do you think these, these ones are suitable? If I was going to download one of these to use as my background. And the other question is, you're going to ask me is this, hey Tom, uh, uh, I got symbols here already, right, as an example, what do I do with them? Well, you got to wipe them out, right? They can't be here. They gotta, you're going to put symbols there yourself. They're going to, your program, when you click the button, is going to produce the image that goes in here, right? That's the first thing you got uh, to think about. Okay, that's cool. So these three symbols, these three, these three, uh, sorry, um, uh, graphics, if you will, right? I would say probably are not the right ones. They don't have enough space for you to put in your jackpot. They don't have enough space to put in your your other additional things. You would have to add to these things for them to be uh, good enough to use for your uh, your assignment. Okay, let's keep looking. 
Okay, this is similar to that one. This is a little bit better. This one, a little bit better. It has credits, it has bet, it has winner paid. That's pretty good, right? This is a, not a bad one, but it's not a complete graphic, right? This looks closer to what I need. This one here, it's a little bit small though, at 357 by 470. And But if you notice, there's also additional buttons here that I don't need, right? Okay, this is not suitable whatsoever because there are no buttons. All, they, all you have is the reels and a bet line, right? So again, these, this would be unsuitable. You have to find something that works for you. And I have found something. If you scroll down, there's this one here, right? It's 2,126 by 2,640 pixels, right? And it's uh, this, I guess she uh, put together this, this graphic, Diane Ransom. She put this thing. Um, okay, I said we're just going to borrow it for this assignment, right? And if you look at it here, you have a complete graphic, right? And you have a couple things. We have some buttons that are already pre, pre uh, kind of laid out. You don't have space for your labels yet. Like I don't have winner paid and all that stuff. We're going to have to add those pieces in there, right? That's the pieces we need in there. But this is not a little a bad little graphic. Why? Because you've got some space up here for your jackpot and some other labels, some of your buttons. All that stuff is there, right? This isn't a bad one to use, right? So this is one. Let's take a look at others. No. And I'm not getting, do I not have a connection? I don't have a connection anymore. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it looks like the internet's down, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on the Wi-Fi. Oh, wait, now it's back up again. Let's take a look at um, Sometimes you get it, and sometimes you don't. Let me just refresh this, and hopefully this will stay up. Here we go. Okay, so again, this one, bad. You have this thing, shutter stock across the face. You don't want to modify this graphic. We need to modify the graphic we find online, right? Uh, this one, this is just like this one, right, but filled out, right? So it's like someone took the original one, this one here, right? Or maybe this wasn't the original, maybe this was the original. And they kind of added additional uh, things to this one. They added some coins in the bottom. Um, you know, you have uh, the, the name of the casino up here, you know, uh, or the, the name of the game. This isn't bad. And you have a bet line in here as well. They've, they've kind of added that in there. You don't have additional... Um, markers in terms of how much you won though. So this is not exactly perfect, but it's probably something I'm going to be using. Let's continue looking, right? So I've got that one. That's another one. Let's look at this one down here. Um, again, this one's bad. It has Shutterstock across it. That would be bad to, to make. And if I search down and down and down, you might find something that's a little bit better. Why am I doing this with you guys? Because I want you guys to understand how to pick your image, right? I don't want you to waste your time because there's going to be a time element with this one. You only have about a week and a half now, right? You might think it's a lot of time. You might say, bah, ha, 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 Tom, it's okay. This is an easy, you know, an easy assignment, right? I'm telling you right now, you know, like I said to you guys before, I'll say it again, but God is in the details, right? And once you guys start going through this thing, trying to make it work, um, you know, it's not as easy as you think. So you need to start as early as you can. That's why I told you to start last week. I know that most of you or all of you haven't done it. So I'm searching for some graphic that makes sense to use. Now, you might find something out there that makes sense. I'm probably going to use that one that we found up here, the first one, this one here. So again, it's from... I'm going to kind of go up here. Here it is. So it's several. It's like uh, two rolls down. If you go to... If you search for slot machine graphic and you go to the third row right? Uh, you know, third row, third column. And we're going to use this one if you want to follow me. Okay, we're going to add to this one. We're going to modify this one. Okay, so first thing to do, I got to download this thing. Right, so I'm going to right click, right, and save image as, and I'm going to put it somewhere, right? I'm probably going to put it within my course documents, so I might as well do that. So I'm going to go to my um, oh, 397, and we're into week uh, lesson six now, so I'm going to probably put it in here. Um, I'm going to create a new project, a new folder. In my new folder, I'm going to call this thing uh, Slot Machine Project. This is so I have all my project files together, just like we did last time. So when you collect your assets, this is the way, the first thing to do, get this thing. Okay, cool. I've downloaded my graphic. Now I'm going to open it up with my favorite editor. Now you can choose whatever favorite editor you have. Mine is Fireworks. Yours might be GIMP, GIMP or uh, Paint.net, whatever you want to use. You put, pull, pull that up. By the way, for those of you who have never used Paint.net, that's not the one. <laughs> uh, uh, 
paints uh, online paint program. Um, what is it called? The paint net. I'll leave it alone. I'll let you guys find it. <laughs> GIMP, though, I would definitely recommend GIMP. If you don't have a graphic program you can use, um, GIMP, I, I've talked about this before. It, this is the um, um, kind of the free version that, that's a graphic uh, image manipulation program. This, this is what GIMP is, right? And if you actually can get there, it looks like my internet is working nice and, nice and slow, right? Um, but if you can get there and download GIMP, this is a, a good program. You could use Microsoft Paint, right? You could do that as well. It doesn't have to be a sophisticated program from what I'm doing, all right? Like the, the manipulation that we're doing here is very, very simple, right? So um, you can certainly use GIMP if you want. I'm going to use Fireworks, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Again, so I'm going to pull up Fireworks. Again, this is Adobe Fireworks CS6. They don't have a Fireworks for Adobe CC. Uh, they've discontinued the product, but it works nicely for me, right? Uh, it's a mini version, if you will, or a simplified version of something like a, a Photoshop. And you can certainly use Photoshop or Illustrator if you're interested or, or if you're confident, more confident with those two tools. Okay, so a couple things. Um, if you notice, I see a problem already. I see this arm here, right? My arm, my one arm bandit, which is what the slot machines were used to be called as well. Um, I don't want an arm on my, my slot machine, so I got to remove that thing, right? It's the same one. If you're looking at the same one that I am, I need to get rid of it, all right? That's the one thing I need to do. So there's a couple of easy ways to do that. I need to crop the image anyway. So I'm just going to kind of go in here, use my crop tool, right? And I'm going to crop as close to the arm as possible so I have less uh, deletion to do, right? And we're going to kind of get in there. And I'm going to zoom in uh, to that area that I'm cropping, right? So just to get in there so I can see some. I also see some other issues. I'm going to crop as close to the slot machine here as possible. So I'm going to go right to the edge right here. Okay, so this arm, most of the arm is gone. I'm going to get rid of this little piece in here too. Uh, but that's the, 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 from the right side, I got to crop that point. So if you do this with me, you'll get part of your work done. So don't just watch me do, right? This is good. Okay, I'm going to crop to the top here as well. All right, and you know what? I'm going to crop to the side so that I'm right close, uh, as close as I can to the, le to the, to the uh, left side as well. And again, I'm, I'm doing this because it'll reduce the chances of me having issues later on with my graphics. Okay, there we go. So I've got, I've kind of selected my graphics now. I've, 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 uh, I've changed my, uh, where I'm cropping. i got to do the bottom too. That's one thing I did forget about. I want to forget the bottom. And the bottom looks like it's pretty good. I don't think I need to go. So it's right at the bottom anyway, so I'm okay. And then for me, I'm going to double click. You just need to crop your yours. I'm going to double click mine. Mine crops when I double click. Right for yours, uh, you might have to do something different, like press crop, right click and crop. Okay, so I've cropped this, and you could barely see that there was a handle here before. You do see that there's something there, but it's hard to see. For me, if you were going to ask me, do I take marks off for that? No, I can't. It's so small. If you're really a perfectionist, however, and you want to get rid of the handle, you could do that. You could go here and use pixel by pixel, you know, uh, ways of erasing. Just get an eraser tool. Um, and I'm not a, I'm not a perfectionist at all, right? But you know, as an example, if you want to, you can, right? Um, if I want to get the eraser tool, my size is pretty small right now. I can raise my size so it's much bigger, so I can get in there. And then, of course, what I want to do, right, is erase the tool so um, it is. It is as um, I'm gonna erase whatever piece I can. Right now, if you notice, I can do it like this, right? But if I'm just from a graphic manipulation perspective, um, it's best to zoom in as much as possible. So I'm just gonna zoom in. I'm just use a magnifying glass, and again, all tools have that. So, so I can zoom in as much as close as I can, right? So I can see this if I'm gonna get rid of it. And if you notice, there's an edge here. There's a couple of things I can do. I can use the eraser tool, or I can cut it out with some kind of lasso tool. Again, there's different kinds of tools out there that allow you to do that. Like, for example, I have a, instead of a lasso tool, I have a polygon tool I can use here. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, graphic manip manipulation programs allow that. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to kind of highlight the area that I want to get rid of within, within reason and then kind of get rid of it. There we go. 
I'm just gonna press delete to get to kind of get rid of that thing. If you notice, I see this checkerbox pattern in the background. That's because I'm using I'm gonna convert this JPEG file into a ping file, a PNG file, which gives me a transparency layer, an alpha layer that I can look through the background. I want that because if I create that transparency layer, then I can have whatever background I want for my final game. I can have a blue background, I can a red background, whatever I want. So I want my, my background here to be transparent, not white. So I'm going to choose my uh, some kind of um, magic wand tool, right, to highlight the rest of the, the area. And I'm just going to zoom out so you can see. Now there's a bit of a problem. It looks white, right, but there's an edge here that I'm not going to capture. And there's a bit of a tolerance. Right now my tolerance is 1, which means no tolerance. I can increase the tolerance of my magic wand tool so it captures more, but too much in this particular case. You notice it's kind of eating into my, my object. I could also trace it out like I did before with my lasso tool. To erase it, you can erase it by hand, right, as an example. By the way, once I've done, done this, I'm going to put up my example and my graphic, my final graphics, up on GitHub if you want to use them. I highly don't recommend you do that, though. I think you should learn to do it on your own because we're going to get you doing stuff later on and you need to do that. Okay, so tolerance of 20 is too high. Let's drop this to 15. Let's see if that's a little better. No. About what, 10? No. No. So I need, it looks like this area here is a problem area. You know, it's going to eat into my this area here. So there's a couple ways I can take care of this. I can draw a line that goes, that kind of covers this, a black line. So it separates my white from this part here, right? I could do that. It's a trick that I use from an isolation perspective to kind of highlight this, the, the entire graphic. I could do that. And I think that's probably what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to escape from my, from my um, um, selection. And again, did you notice that when I went back, right? I, even though this little area is transparent and you can't see it, it's too big to see. By the way, my graphic is really huge. It's like 1,700 pixels by right now by 2600 pixels and wh what's my size of my screen going to be probably something like a 640 by 480 or something like that so i got to really reduce this graphic anyway right in order for it to fit on my screen and this is a good thing you want to make sure that your graphic right is really big because it's better to get from big to small right it's as opposed from from getting a small graphic and making it big because if you do that you're going to get pixelation right and it'll look crappy you don't want that to happen all right, so I'm going to kind of cut this out. You do the same thing while I'm doing this. I'm just going to cut this piece out just so that way um, as I go in here, I'm going to, going to zoom out a little bit, just a bit, so I can still see what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to um, kind of uh, create a line. Here's my line. And if you notice, I also got to make sure my line has some kind of, uh, you know, level. I'm going to kind of pick this darker, uh, I'm going to get it, use my selection tool. It's like an eyedropper, and I'm going to try, to try to pick one of the colors that already exists in my graphic, like this one. Here it is. Okay, so now I've got my line tool. And what I'm going to do is I want to draw my line, right, so that it kind of goes up to here, so it isolates my line, right, uh, you know, from this white space area. And the reason why I want to do that is because otherwise it's going to try and capture my line, along with my slot machine, which is not what I want. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just creating a line that kind of separates my this white from this white. Okay. And the same thing goes up here, because I think I had a bit of a problem up here as well. And again, my line, you're going to see, is kind of quite dark when it comes up to this, this area of the stage here, as you can see it now. And I'm just going to make, all I'm doing is I'm drawing, I'm drawing my lines. And the good thing about um, fireworks is it's kind of helping me out. There we go. So you see a bit of a line there now. And I've done that just with the line tool, right? So you, any program has a line tool. I'm using a lot. I'm using, a, um, you know, Fireworks because that's my favorite program. But you don't have to. You can use whatever program makes sense for you to create a line tool that kind of separates my graphic from the white background. Okay. Once I've done that, now if you notice here, look, look on the right. On the right, my tool has a bunch of layers. And if you've got that layer thing going on, that's bad because even though if I, if I grab this one, it's not going to separate the two layers a lot of times. So what I want to do is I want to flatten my selection. I want to flatten my layers into one layer. And you can do that with your any graphic tool as well. So if I select all, I see a bunch of different lines. And I'm going to right click 
and I'm going to go to uh, flatten selection, which actually flattens everything back down to one layer, one bitmap, right? And now the lines are part of the graphic, right? Now this should help me out. Let's see if it's, this helped me a little bit. I'm going to kind of highlight this area here. Okay, not bad. I can increase the tolerance now, so a little bit more. Let's go to 20 again. This is good. Now it's a solid line, if you notice, around here, right? So you see, my tolerance for up here is good, right? It's my solid line. I can delete this now, right? I can uh, get rid of it. And I see now a solid checker pattern on the background. I'm creating my transparent graphic. I do the same thing to the other side. As long as I didn't mess up, which it doesn't look like it did, I'm okay, right? Got my transparent background on both sides, right? Again, do you have to be a graphic artist to do this course? Absolutely not. Does it help to know a little bit of graphic program? Absolutely. It does help. And even if you're doing web design or web development in the future, it always helps to know a little bit about graphics. So when the graphic artist gives you a project, then you know how to look at it, what, what they've done, you understand the graphic, and you can rec recommend to them uh, things that they can do better or change or whatever if things aren't working for you from a design perspective. The bottom isn't that bad. I'm just going to delete it. I know there's a bit of a glitch on this side here, like T right here. It's a little bit of a glitch, but that's okay. It's all small. No one's going to notice. Okay, so I've got my graphic, right? And I'm going to save this thing as. So I'm going to go File. I'm going to Save As this time. And this time, on the bottom, instead of JPEG, because that's not the right image format that I want. I mean, I could use a JPEG, but all it would be, it would just replace this transparent background with a white. I don't want that. That would just reverse everything I've just done, right? So that doesn't make any sense. I want to change this to a ping image, right? So it's uh, the PNG, flattened PNG, right? I can do a fireworks PNG. There's different ones I have. Any PNG image for you guys is fine. So here's my slot machine P, uh, PNG image. If you notice, it's going to go right in my slot machine project where I got my slot machine JPEG that I downloaded from the internet. Okay, I'm going to save this one. Okay, cool. It's quite large. It's quite, quite large. 1753 by 2596 is really big. I want to make this potentially work on a phone, my slot machine. So again, if I'm going to be backwards compatible with a non-retina phone, the size is 320 by 480. All right? If I want to make a retina size graphic, like a 2x type of graphic or a 3x, I'm going to multiply the pixels by 2 or 3. For now, to keep it simple for our web, let's make it so that it's 320 by 480. So 320 wide by 480 uh, you know, tall. That's quite a drop from 1753 uh, and 2596. You definitely don't want to do this in program. You don't want to do this with code. You want to do this outside because you want to do all your manipulation in a graphics program like this as opposed to using code. If you do it using code, it's just going to take up cycles and it's going to make your game less effective. All right, so I'm going to select, select this thing. Now there's several ways. You need to transform this object. I'm just going to use my, my handlebars to do this. You can also do this with other programs. And I'm going to reduce this thing so it's the right size. But I'm going to keep my ratio, right? And, and in Fireworks, I mean, if I press the Shift key, it kind of makes sure that my ratio stays the same width and height, right? And it doesn't change my ratio. It looks pretty small, but you'll see it's actually not. It's just because I'm zoomed in quite a bit. You notice my zoom ratio, I'm 50% zoomed, so it's only half the size of what it really is from a real world perspective. I'm going to keep zooming in until I get to about 320 wide. Okay. Well, let's see how we get. When we get 320, I'm in my range. I want to be in that 320 by 480 range. That's pretty good. And I'm actually 320 by 474. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, that looks really small to you. Okay. Now, I'm going to just take away the rest of this, of this object by going to Modify Canvas, Trim Canvas. Or you can do it other ways by cropping the image again, in your case. Okay, so there's my canvas. If you notice, I'm at 50%. If I go back to 100%, this is what my real image size is going to be like. Right? This is the actual size. So this is pretty good. I'm happy with this size of image. Right? Um, just to zoom in so I can see it a little better. So 320 by 474, that's pretty good. Um, if I want to, I could skew it a little bit down this way. The only thing is the buttons will become a little longer as well. So that's bad. So I think 320 is the right size by 474, and I think we're good there. <clears throat> and so, any questions around that? So far, what I've done? All I've done is I've taken an image from the internet and I've modified it 
so that way I can start to use it. Now I'm not done. This is just the first piece. Remember what I did with the, with the, with the uh, calculator. I took the calculator, broke it up so I could start using it. Now if I'm happy with these buttons, if I'm happy, right, then I want to cut them out so I can make them interactive, right? Okay, I don't have to do it that way, but I think I recommend it. So again, if I zoom into the button, let's take a look. I got a reset button, that's pretty good. I've got a pay table, that makes no sense to me. What does pay table mean, right? Uh, it just shows you the pay table, what, how you get paid. Um, here's bet one, and here's bet max. I mean, I have a bunch of different buttons in mine. I've, you know, from I can kind of show you how many I have, right? So if I keep the button, I think what I want to do is get rid of the inside so I can use, I'll keep the outside, the size and everything else, but this inside button itself, I want to get rid of so I can type my own stuff. I think that's important for me to do. I'm going to make it a graphic, not a text object too, because it makes more sense that I make it a graphic so I have to do less with CreateJS, okay? The more I do with CreateJS, the more cycles it takes. Okay, so now what I want to do is, I've got my slot machine. I'm going to save this thing. I've reset it. I've reset the size. So I got my size 320 by 474. Now I'm going to cut this button out and make it its own. So I'm going to create my own custom buttons. Okay, so I'm going to take a crop tool, and I'm going to just select the button. I'm comfortable with the size, and it works with the graphic, right? I'm going to kind of zoom in here as much as I can. Looks right. Let's see the size. I'm at 49 by 49. That's pretty good. I think I'm going to make it 50 by 50, though. For an extra pixel, no one's going to care. How about that? So here's 50 by 50. And if I just, I can use my arrow keys to kind of pull it up, right? So I get a 50 by 50. Now, there's a problem with 50 by 50. I see already. The problem is I get this, this little, the, the, the sides of my button, unfortunately, you, that's why it's 49 by 49. Uh, the this button, the way it's sized, it's sized that um, just the way I've re resized everything. I think 49 by 49 is what it's going to have to be. Right, so let me go back to 49 by 49. I, I'm, the only reason why I'm saying that is I don't want as much of this this other area here, this yellow, this sorry, this this kind of pinkish maroon, whatever you want to call the color. I want to get rid of it, and I'm going to make so my button is transparent anyway but I don't want it to be outside. I want to kind of squeeze my button down as, as, as small as it can be. All right, so this is my button size, 49 by 49. I'm going to cut it out by double tapping, right? So now I've got my button. I'm going to save this file, save as, into my project, right, as, you know, kind of our my button template. So any buttons I make, they're all going to be the same size, right? Okay, so there's my button template. I gotta get rid of this 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 stuff, right? Because this doesn't make any sense for me. I want to get rid of it so it's transparent again, right? Okay, so I'm gonna kind of kind of go out here, get rid of this piece, right? Go over here, get rid of that piece, go over here, get rid of that piece. And if you notice, there's a bit of pixelation, right? Like this. So there's a bit of thing, there's things I can do to correct this. Right, again, I could make my own shape for the button. I got my proper shape. I could make my own button at this point if I want to. I can make my button square as opposed to as opposed to angle this way. And that's probably what I'm gonna do to keep it simple. So I'm gonna kinda make kind of select. Well, first of all, I gotta select my um, uh, my button color. I'm gonna make it so that it's matching the black. And if it's not, if I want to make a true black, I can do that too. For now, let's just keep it as is. And I'm gonna kind of draw my, my square so that it's on the outside. There it is, that's pretty small, right? And I'm gonna increase my border, so it's like four, or something like that, maybe more, maybe 10. There we go, so now the button's all sealed up. So it's a square button, right? Not a round button. If I wanna round it off, I have ways of doing that. This program allows me to do that rounding. I'm not gonna do it, just keep it simple, because your program, Paint, or whatever you're using, may not have that capability, right? Okay, cool, this is all right. My, my square button. Now I gotta get rid of my inside, which is another square, if you notice, almost exactly. Now there are a number of different ways to do that. If I wanna keep this grading, this gradation idea, and the, the rounding that I have here, which I kinda like, right? Then I wanna get pop this off here, so which means maybe I wanna co color it the whole thing, this color, right? Okay, so how do I do that? Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to pop this piece away. So I'm gonna kind of, instead of like, uh, um, cropping it, I'm going to kind of go in here like this, right? And I'm going to get rid of the area that I don't want. 
like this. And I just press, I'm going to press delete, right? So it kind of pops that off. Now I've got this big blank space. Uh-oh, what am I going to do, you're going to say, right? Let's get rid of some of this piece, too. So I'm just going to get rid of just that light blue is going to be left. There we go. Okay, so this is my new bitmap. And I've got another bitmap, the rectangle that goes around it right now. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to take this bitmap on the bottom and duplicate it all the way up. So what do I do, right? So first of all, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do kind of highlight the area that I want. Right, here's my area. As long as, as, long, as light as possible. I'm going to copy it, and if I've done this correctly, I'm going to paste it. If you notice, it's created another bit, another layer right here, and I'm going to move it up, right? And again, right? So kind of paste and move that up. And now, if you notice, there's a bit of separation here. That's okay. We're going to fix that in a second. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of create my little area. I just want to make it so it's even. Paste. Move it up, right? Don't worry about that. Now everything is copacetic. It's almost one color. Keep doing that. Okay, cool, cool. So I've got my my area that I'm starting to. I got rid of that piece, and I got this little area going to fix up. And I'm going to move that into place. That's a little bit closer. There we go. Okay, so it looks like I've got rid of that area, but there's a bit of, of a problem here. So the couple things I could do. Um, one thing is I, could, I, I want to match this color. That's what I want to do first, right? So again, there's many ways of doing this thing. Um, I want to create another little box. I'm going to create my my fill. I'm going to kind of choose. I'm going to kind of choose the color, and it looks like my color is 0057A2. If you want to follow me, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm just going to make it all one. I meant that I want to kind of take a sample. Sorry, I've got everything highlighted. There we go. I want to take a sample, right, of this area here. So this, this one here, that's what I want to do. This is my sample, right? And what I do is when I want to go in there is when I highlight my box, like this one, if I click something, it's going to turn the same color, right? So that's the first thing I need to do. But what I want to do is create another object, uh, some kind of square, like this. So let's just do that. And I'm going to follow the pattern. Do that right here. That's all she's done. It looks like the person who created this thing kind of made a square like this, right? Don't worry about the color right now because I've got a border of 10. I'm going to go to, to a, I'm going to go borderless. So I'm just going to kind of get rid of that. That's good. And my fill is messed up. I want to fill it with that. Good. A little bit of a problem over here, right? Because if you notice, these pixels are not, they're like that lighter blue pixel. Um, I could fix that by doing another square the other side and another square this way. Or I can just draw a line. That's another way of doing it because it looks like it's a one pixel line. So pixel by pixel, I can draw this line that goes to here. Right? I've got the line. My line is one and it's, there's nothing, there's no color. I'm going to change the color to this. Right? And I'm going I'm to modify the line. There's just, all I'm doing is making lines, guys. I am, and I move this thing up a little bit because I made this a little bit lower. Okay, there. There we go. Kind of a little bit closer. And I want to get rid of this one. Again, there we go. Maybe make it two pixels large this time around to cover this piece. And maybe do the same thing up here. So one pixel, make it two pixels, make it a little darker. And there's about a bit of a line here as well, and a line in the bottom. I might just want to copy and paste these lines. So copy, paste. And then down. Oops, there we go. And move it across. So that for the most part, right, for the most part, I've got a line. All I'm doing is moving the lines around so that way I cover up that area really quickly. Okay, cool. For the most part, it's 49 by 49. You're not going to see the difference at this point. It looks like a button shape, all right, or some kind of square shape. You could certainly select buttons from the internet and use them, separate buttons, if you wanted to. I'm just going to keep it simple. Okay. So I've got this image, this is cool, but I want to make all these pieces, all these layers, one, so I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to kind of select them all, right, you can see there's lots of layers here, and I'm going to right click and flatten my selection again, so now there, all the layers are gone, there's one big image, right, and just to be safe, I'm going to click my, my uh, crop tool and make sure that, again, I'm cropped into that 49 by 49 
image size. There's nothing else outside of this image. Okay, cool. I've done that. Yay. Okay, now I can start using this template as a background for what I'm going to write there. Okay, let's save this template. So now it's my, it's saved. Now I'm going to start writing my text in there. And I need to write things like reset. You know, I need to write things like power. I need to write things like, you know, bet max and bet one and spin. Those kind of things is what I got to write in there, right? So I think my first one I need to write in there is the spin button because if I don't have a spin button, I can't do anything. So I got to write in spin. Don't worry about my text. And it's, it's the wrong color and it's the wrong size, but that's okay. I'm just going to reduce that by going here and changing this to like, I don't know, 14. Um, and then maybe 12. Yeah, 14 is probably okay. For now, and the color, obviously, I don't want it red. I don't know why I chose red. Probably the one, what, one thing I did last time, I'm going to make it white because I think white looks nice. And the tool allows me to kind of center it in the middle. You can kind of use your own tools to do that, measure it if you like. So I got my spin button. Yeah. Yay, my spin button. Okay, cool. So this is my spin button. And what I want to do is, um, there's a couple things I could do. If I want to get rid of this black background now, I did the black background for a reason, right? I did it so I wanted to make everything the same. But my question to you is, do I really need my black background? And chances are, I don't. Let's just check and see what my graphic looks like, just, uh, just to make sure, because uh, that might be an issue. So I'm going to kind of open up my slot machine thing image just to see what it looks like and if I run in there if you notice the black background what it does is it kind of highlights the area around the button and separates it from this maroon area that's also a gradient right I'm not making my button background a gradient it's going to be flat because I'm a simple kind of guy and I don't expect you guys to be artists either right so that's one thing if you notice I'm going to keep my text separate right from my button graphic my text I can modify over and over again and when I save this as a ping image it's going to be um, something that I can't modify anyway it's going to be just an image right okay so and I'm also going to think about when I use my buttons maybe for my last example because we made those calculator buttons and I'm, I'm going to use reuse the pet calculator class that buttons button class that I made in the calculator I'm going to reuse those buttons because why, why am I going to recreate the wheel I've already got them from last week right I know that when I hover over the button, it's going to go 80% transparency, which is okay. This will work, right, for that. It won't be perfect. It'll be a, a, a button that works on a, on a slot machine that's on the web, right? It's not a real-life button, but it's a good enough button for me. Okay, so this is the way I, I know this my, in my mind that's how it's working. And I've got 14 uh, <clears throat> uh, size text. If I don't like my aerial, like if I think my aerial is the wrong kind of, uh, uh, you know, type, I can always choose another one. Like if I like Helvetica, like, uh, you know, one of my favorites is that Helvetica Nui, right? Which is kind of the more most popular one. I think uh, uh, Apple used it for many years, right? It's a little bit different of a, of a text. I can certainly do that. I mean, you can't tell. Uh, it just opens up the letters just a little bit differently. And I have to re, re kind of center this thing because my size of the font, my text will change. So I got to make sure that it's centered in the middle now. Okay, cool. So I've got my my object, I'm going to save this now, file, save as my spin button. So I'm going to call this spin button. Okay, cool, there's my spin button. All right, let's do another one. Uh, so we'll say, you know, that's right, and then maybe max. Can I do that? Can I fit bet max in there? And if not, I may have to make the two separate objects, bet and max, but I think bet max works, right? Bet max. I think that probably works nicely there too. I think I like it there. But max. All right, so I'm going to kind of. Now, if you notice, I'm not uh, using all caps. I could do that as well. So if I wanted to do that with my spin button, so if I wanted to go with all caps, it would change the size. So spin, let's do all caps. And again, all I want to do is resize this thing. So it's in, kind of in the middle. I think this looks like it's good. And there we go. I, to, to verify that it's in the middle, I could change the size of my object here, but I'll leave it the way it is. File, sorry, let's save that as spin button again. And now that I've done bet max, I'm going to have to do the same thing. So bet max, I know that's what I'm going to go with it. So this is my maximum bet, so everything, bet, bet everything. Maybe we'll make it so the, bet, the maximum bet is 10 or something like that. Also, if you notice a couple other things, my bet and my max aren't centered. 
It was okay to do, leave it the other way around with spin because there's only one word, but this particular case, maybe a what I sent to them. So I'm going to kind of pull that in again, right? That max. It's not bad. Uh, not great, but not bad. So I'm going to file, save as uh, the bet max button, right? So I'm making, I'm making my buttons up now. And the next one would be probably something like bet one. So bet one, right? I'm recreating the buttons because I want to make sure that they fit my style over and over again, right? File, save as, you know, bet one. Button. I'm using button, the type of object I'm creating in the background. Uh, this is the image I'm going to use. <clears throat> I definitely need a reset. <clears throat> I'm going to think about that, how, how that's going to work out. I don't think reset's going to work uh, this size, right? So I think reset's going to be too big. That's okay, because I can always drop it for reset and make it centered. So it's going to look a little different, right? So let us... The refresh? Yeah, I guess so. I could use a symbol too if you want. I'm just trying to make it, I'm going to try and keep it simple for you guys right now. But yes, you're right. You can definitely use symbols. There's different approaches. Your slot machine is going to be your own. You don't have to follow my rules, right? I'm just making mine, mine look like this. Okay, here's my reset button. Cool, cool. And file, save as, you know, reset button. Okay, good. Um, let's see what else we have on our graphic that I'm missing. So reset. I don't need a pay table, right? I need a spin and a bet max and a reset. So I, I've got enough buttons here now for, for the basics. Now, if I want to have more than just bet one, like bet 10, you know, as an example, if I have more room and my graphic probably allows me to have a few more buttons, right? Um, maybe, maybe not. The slot this is the slot image I can probably re get rid of, which I'm going to do anyway. With this whole, whole graphic, is going to be, I'm just going to take this whole graphic, if you notice. It's a big gradient. and make it a big box that has one color in it, right, to make it easy. Okay? And if I do that, I might have enough room for an extra button, right, like the power button or bet 10 instead of bet 1. Bet 1, bet 10, bet max, spin, you know, that kind of thing, right? Very, very simple. You need other buttons. You need a power button. I'm not going to make all the buttons for you. Come on, right? You got to do some work. But I'm going to go in here now and get rid of some of this stuff. Um, so let's go and do my my box. So here's I'm going to create another little box here. All right? Here's my box. I'm going to resize this thing to make sure it's correct. Zoom in. So all I'm doing is making a box, if you notice, around this my slot machine graphic. I'm going back to the slot machine graphic just because I know what I want to do now, right? I have a bit of a border. I'm going to take my border away. And my box, I'm going to change the color to maybe match up what it has. So maybe this darker color I like. So I'm just going to use my, my color picker and kind of select my box the way I like. Okay, so I've got this. I definitely want to do the same thing for this piece, right, to color, kind of cover it in. And now I have a box that kind of takes up the whole space, but it's one homogeneous color as opposed to a gradient. I could add a gradient later. For now, keeping it simple. I use the KISS rule, keep it simple, stupid, right? That kind of thing. And I, you know, I, I say that to myself a lot, keep it simple, stupid. And then that way I don't get into trouble, right? When it comes to my, what I have to do for my clients. The more complex you get it, the more time it takes, right? And if your client wants something else, they gotta pay for it, right? So, um, I'm going to highlight everything. I've got two, both layers. I'm going to reduce it to one by right-clicking and flattening my selection. You can also save the bitmap and then open it up again. There's different ways of doing it in different programs. Okay, good. So I've got my, my, uh, my ping object here, and I've got one continuous color. Now I want to kind of size up my buttons. So I'm going to take an example of my button, like reset, and these other buttons, and drag and drop them in. So I'm going to kind of control C, right, and control V, see where my button is going to put uh, going to fit and again I'm probably going to want to put my button in the middle somewhere where it seems like it's sized correctly and if I wanted to size my graphic right that's another way of doing it and that's a good way I'm just going to get that right so if I know my what's the, the size of my box and I can do that by of course using my selection tool and highlighting it or just you know there's different ways of doing that 
this object is measuring it here, right? So my box is 304 by 101. Why did it have to be 304 by 101? <laughs> Just the way it worked out, right? So that's okay. I can, the great thing about fireworks, and this is why I use it, I can create a new canvas, which is 304 by 101. All right, so 304 by 101. All right, there it is. So now I know this is the size of my object. And now when I grab these things, this reset button, Watch me here. I'm just having an untitled canvas as a placeholder. I'm going to put it, put it in here. Right? I'm going to kind of put it in there. When I do that, oh, it gives me the, that, that guide. So I know that that's the middle. So my reset, I definitely want on my left. This is where I probably want it, somewhere here. All right, let's grab the other ones. So I'm going to kind of file, open the other ones up. I'm going to go into my... Um, <clears throat> course documents. Remember, I, got, I did it under courses uh, 397, and I did it under my slot machine project, right? And I have these buttons here. So here's my, uh, I'm going to do the next one, it's going to be my bet one button. So here it is. There's bet one. I'm going to copy that in. This is the actual size of the button, right? I'm going to plop that in here, right? I'm going to drag and drop it so it's in the same line as this one. Right? Just so that way I can, I can, I'm kind of sizing it or placing it ahead of time so I know what my size is going to be. This is the total size I have uh, of my graphic. Then I'm going to take these buttons the way they are, size the way they are, separated the way they are, and put them back into my graphic. That's all I'm doing. I'm using tricks to do this. Okay. Okay, that's one. Let's go to the next one. Um, my bet one, bet max, and bet 10. I don't have a bet 10. Um, I can probably create one. Let's do the bet max first. See what I, see what kind of room I have. Right, go back to the untitled one and put it back. Right. There we go. That's kind of the dead center, it looks like. That's pretty good. So I've got to figure out the, the spacing between these, and there's some tricks you can use in your graphic program to do that. For now, let's just leave it as is. I'll, I'll center that in a second. So one, two, three buttons looks pretty good. The spacing between these is slightly different. I've got to change that. Right. And... My spin button is very important. Okay, my spin button, and I'm going to go back here and put it back in. You can see what I'm doing. Okay, this one I'm going to kind of put on the side here more. Again, I'm trying to keep it the same, on the same level as this one. I've got quite a bit of room here between the three, right? Or the bunch of these buttons, right? So I think I can create a bet 10 instead of the bet max. So. Just to save time, I'm going to kind of pull this across here. And I'll check the, the tops of these things in a second, right? Uh, in Fireworks, you can also group these things. I can kind of say group, you know, group, group. So I don't have to keep on highlighting it all. Group. Okay, so they're all grouped up. Um, let's go to, that's uh, uh, Command or Control G. Let's go to um, my my reset button and change this reset button so it says, um, oh, actually, the better way to do it is to grab my a button that's a bet button and modify that. So I got my reset button. I'll say don't save. Let's get what button, my bet one button in there. Instead of bet one, I'll say bet 10. Right, bet 10. You can also use numbers instead of just like a, not a words. I'm going to save this as bet 10. I'll save as that, that 10 button, there we go, that 10. And I can use this that, that 10 button that I just created and put it into this, my, uh, my lineup here, my button lineup. Okay, cool, so that's kind of in the middle. And you know what, that's really the top. I, I have guides I can use as well, just to make sure this is correct. And I kind of uh, group that one up too, there we go. That's really the middle of my stage. And you know what? Just to do that, I'm going to bring in a guide. Again, you can do this with your favorite program if you're good at uh, something like a uh, fireworks, Photoshop. Um, if you like to use Illustrator, right? All I'm doing is I'm just aligning them so they're the same by eye. And then I'm going to go check them numerically in a second. Okay, cool. So they're, they're all kind of lined up. And again, what I could do is I could use the 
um, lining up tool to, to give them the, the right amount of space. If you're using Illustrator, it does that really nicely for you. Um, you know, again, I could always measure the distance. I, I, do I want to be a stickler here? Probably not. So what can I use? I'm going to kind of use my eye for now just to kind of uh, set them up. There we go. Maybe a little bit more on this side. Oop. And it, if you notice, it kind of gives me, it kind of jumps because Fireworks knows what I want to do. I'm kind of trying to align these equally. And then I'm going to group this whole bunch of ones together, making a big group of a group. And now what I can do is I can kind of use that to kind of align everything in the center. So now they're all aligned center. Um, if I don't think it's right, because I see there's a bit more space over here, right? I can certainly try and line it myself and get rid of this little guide, right? There we go. That's the real center. All right, there we go. So now that I've done that, now that I've aligned it to center, right, as an example, I know where this, where this group starts. It starts at um, uh, X is 8 and 27 down, right, from my group, group alignment. So I'm going to kind of take this whole thing, right, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to slot machine over here, I believe. I'm going to go, uh, if I say paste as mask, I can do that. Paste inside, paste attributes. If I go paste inside, right, it's going to be grouped in there behind, right? So I don't want that. If I just go paste, it'll paste it in there, but it won't be aligned properly, right? I know that I've got to come down approximately just down here. It will try and place it in the middle. Right, so it's in the middle of my of my uh, thing a little bit. Uh, does it look perfect? Right, by no means does it look perfect. Right, like I think the, the square buttons are a little uglier than the rounder ones. Myself, right, but will it serve to get your marks? Absolutely. <laughs> right, I'm I'm here for marks. Right, it's all for marks. So I, I'm reason why I'm aligning it this way is because I'm going to make this. I want them all separate, but I'm aligning it so I know I want to know where all my buttons are going to be. So I'm going to leave that here for now. Then I'm going to take the buttons and mark down the positions of the buttons on the graphic because it's, I know it's 320 by 480. And once I mark them down, I can put them back like I did for my calculator, back on my um, on the back of my calculator or on my on my graphic. This is part of the work we have to do when we modify things. I know it's like watching paint peel, but I'm trying to show you where to start. This is the place to start. Create your graphic. Okay, cool. This is good. Uh, I gotta chop these things off too, because this doesn't work for me. Or I gotta create a graphic that goes in the middle, so I have a space where I'm gonna produce this my 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 blanks, my cherries, my stuff. Now, again, if you were gonna look at online for objects, and if I was gonna look for slot machine symbols as an example, or graphics, if I go slot machine symbols and I go to images, right? Uh, there are quite a few of them. Like, this is not a bad one, right? It's not what I had, right? I had, didn't have all these. This is pretty good, actually. Um, if you notice, there's a good collection of slot machine symbols you need. You need some of something like this in order for you to do your slot machine. Your slot machine has to have symbols that come up whenever you have a graphic. Whenever you have a bananas or cherries or something that comes up, it has to be like this. Okay, so, I don't know. I'm gonna, I mean, I can go down and see which ones I like. Um, and if I'm missing a symbol, I can always find them. Right? Like I like these highlighted ones, these are pretty nice, but I don't have enough of it. I have to have a good selection of symbols that are all in the same style. Right? So I need some of those. I also need a blank. I definitely need blank symbols because blanks will come up. So a blank has to kind of override the symbol that's going to come up. Right? So here's my symbols, a bunch of different ones. Um, I can probably grab them from here as an example. Right? Um, let me just go back to fireworks. I need to grab blanks that fit in this area here, right? Because this is where my, 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 my symbols are going to come up in here, right? So that's the next stage. Let me just go back to this. I don't need this anymore, right? Because that was just my staging area, just to see how everything would fit. And it does fit nice, right? Um, it's already starting to look different than it did before, right? So I can get rid of these. Okay, this is my slot machine graphic. I'm going to save my slot machine graphic the way it is right now, right? And then I'm going to go back and modify it to make it a background. Okay? There are two different issues here. One is these, these, these uh, are the symbols for my buttons, and right now there's the background. The background is definitely going to be separate. I'm going to name it here in my, in my slot machine, in my uh, program. I'm going to call this the background, right? And this is just my, uh, my button group. 
Okay, so my gut and button group and my background. Uh, you don't have to do that. I do that to keep things straight so I know which ones are which. Okay. Now, I need to create this thing in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this a square and I'm going to kind of zoom in here. Right? And I need to create it so that it's inside these borders. Now there's a problem here. You notice how this bulges out and comes back in? This is nice, but it's a pain in my ass, right? It's a pain in the ass because it goes outside the borders, right? I'm, I'm an inside the border kind of guy right now, right? Because I'm keeping it simple, stupid, right? So a couple things I can do. I can redraw this border thing, this line, with a black border inside, right? Making it uh, kind of a gray border, very, very straightforward as opposed to this gradient in this size. And I think that's what I'm going to do to kill some of this area here, this, this, this kind of bulge. Because that doesn't make any sense to me, right? For what I want to do with, my, with this graphic. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to kind of take the size and it's going to be pr probably going to end up being blue or some other weird color or white. But that's okay. And I'm going to make it so that the graphics are around the same size each time. Hopefully they are. Okay, so that's really boring. It's white and that, that's bad, right? I need to add some kind of border to it. Let's add a little bit of a gradient. Um, I think CCC would be okay. And let's make it a border of two. Right? Eh. Meh. It's not perfect. But it's good enough. All right, so good. So I've got a bit of a border of two. And I've got my, this is my, this plate, the space where my, my images are going to appear. I'm going to make this part of the whole graphic in a second, as you'll see. All right, so that's the first one. Let's take the take a copy of that and kind of paste it again and pull it over and put it on top of the other one, right? And let's paste that again and pull it down so it covers that one. Where's my arrows? Do that. Let's pull back and see how that looks. If it's even, I need to make it even, but they're the exact same size. Right? Do the exact same. So I've kind of replaced what's in there. Uh, for a moment, I'm going to just get rid of this group. Right? So I'm going to cut it out. So Control X, cut out. And now I've got my graphic without the buttons, but I need these there because that's going to be part of my background. I'm just trying to solidify how my, my, my the look and feel of my graphic is going to be. File, save. Good. Now, now I'm going to kind of Control V and paste those buttons back in there. Right? So I've got my back buttons back, but the actual background, the slot machine graphic, is separate from this. Right? Okay, cool. So I've got these this area here. Now they're not flattened images yet. And what I want to do, actually, you know what? Maybe I should flatten them. So I don't I don't I think I should probably do that again. So flatten. Make them all one. And save. And control V. Okay. So now they're flattened. I don't need that to come up in my things. Okay, and what I want to do now is I've got to add areas where it kind of shows off my the bets, you know, my money, all that kind of stuff, right? Now I come back down to this and I'm like, hmm, that's why I put the buttons here. And I didn't solidify them yet, right? I might need some spaces here for player bets, some labels, right? So just like I had before in my in my slot machine, I need some labels that come up: player bet, um, you know, player money, like credits, total credits, win, how much I won or lost, right? Those kind of things. Maybe on top of here, some kind of jackpot, right? I need those things there as well, right? I'm showing you how to build this thing out. So when you make your own, and I recommend you make your own because you're going to make it your own, um, you know how to do it, how I did it, right? Actually, I do it every year. Every time we get it, we have, a, we have uh, one of these uh, sessions. I make a new slot machine graphic. And, and, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, people take my slot machine graphic and use it. Please don't do that. Make your own, right? I'm telling you, I'm showing you how to make your own. Okay, so I means, that means i got to pull my buttons down a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm probably going to put my buttons down here in my, in my slot machine and put my labels in here. This is why I didn't make this fixed in there, right? I did want to center them. Like, so I need to make them in the center somewhere, right? But I don't want to, I don't need to make the center here necessarily. Okay, cool. So this is where my, my symbols are going to be, and i got to come up with how big they're going to be. I only, I have three of them, one, two, three. Maybe divide this in three. Well, good, look, look, take a look. My buttons are a good sizing, 
right, for my stuff. I have five buttons and I have three symbols. <clears throat> the other way to look at it is the space of my box here that I have. <clears throat> like we said before, I have a box that's approximately 304 by 101, right? There it is, 304 by 101. And I want to divide that by three, right? That means each, my total size of each of my objects is probably going to be about 80 pixels. Three times eight is 240 plus space between, as an example, for, uh, for spacing. So about 80 pixels, I would say, for each of my boxes. Okay, cool, let's do that. So I'm going to kind of go in here and create a box. And I'm going to kind of chop it off in a second. Okay, so here's my box. I'm going to make this so that I'm going to keep the same style, right? I'm going to make this so that it's about 80 pixels wide. There it is. Okay. And I'm going to start off so that the edge of my button and, my, and the edge of my box is the same approximately. This is where my box is going to be. And I want to make three of them. All right, so one, two. I'm going to zoom in there. Yeah, it's pulling me down a little bit. That's fine. I like that. That's a good position. I'm just going to pull it up. There we go. And three. That's good. Kind of lined up with my right. So I've lined it up with my right. I've lined it up with my left. Let me see. I've lined it up with my left. I've lined it up with my top. In the middle, so there's three boxes uh, physically aligned. These are where I'm going to put, this is where I'm going to put all my, uh, my results, right? So player uh, money, player bet, and, you know, uh, kind of result, win or lose, player winnings, right? Now I need some, some kind of um, text that tells me that. So I'm going to kind of, I need room for the text, and I think I want to make it so that it's this size, right? So I'm going to kind of put my text in there and go, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, maybe credits, player credits. Type that aside, right? And maybe pull it down a little bit. There you go. Play your credits. I'm going to copy and paste that because I already have that. Might as well just use the same thing. Maybe move it up one. There you go. Instead of player credits, it's going to be player bet. Right? There it is. Now, this is physically going to be set in my slot machine permanently, right? It's not going to change. I have to make my graphic exactly how I want it so I can reduce the amount of programming I need to do, right? The more I do it here, the less I have to do it later. Okay, cool. One more. I know it's like watching paint peel again, guys. I know use that, and you, I use that analogy a lot, but it is. Because when you're watching me do it, it's not as fun as when you do it, right? That's why I encourage you to do it with me. Player bet and then... Um, <clears throat> Kind of like a win amount or a total amount result, you know, spin result. I say spin result. I call it spin result. Go. Spin result. All right, good. There we go. Pull that down. Make sure that's the same. It is. It is. Okay, so I got my spin result, my player bet, my player credits. I think that's. I'm, I'm kind of happy to zoom out and see what it looks like. And 100%. So let's see what it looks like at 100%. See if I'm happy with that. Okay, I can kind of see that, right? I'm pretty happy with that. I can see the what, what I'm saying there. I'm pretty small, but again, I want this graphic to fit in a phone, right? So this is why I'm putting and making it this way. Okay, cool. I need one more. I'm going to take this player bet and this one, copy it and paste it, and move both of them up here, right? Kind of in the middle. Well, I'm going to say jackpot, right? Now my jackpot up here, my amount here, this might, might as well be a different color, right? So I'm going to change the color kind of maybe to black. So that way I can see it. There we go. Player bet. Instead of player bet, it's going to be the jackpot. Jackpot. Right? Again, I'm using my, my uh, smart guides to do that. Now, I have a bunch of space up here. 
I'm going to leave the space for you because you may want to put a power button up here, right? You may want to put some other stuff, some other kind of writing for your style. I'll leave that all up there. But really, at the end of the day, I think I've got my, my design now, okay? So this is good. This is all good, right? Okay, so I need to take away my buttons one more time. So here's my button group. Take all this away. I'm going to control X because my buttons are going to be added later, right? These areas here are going to be permanent, right? So I'm going to kind of control A or command A and I'm going to kind of flatten my selection again and you can use your own way of doing it. So this one big graphic, I'm going to file, save, so that's my background. Okay, now I'm going to control V, put them back so this is where it's going to be and this is where I'm going to start off uh, with my, with my um, positioning. Okay, so I've got everything I need, well, except for this area here. Okay, cool. Let's just go over here. Now, my graphic, when they come up, whatever they are, bananas, cherries, whatever, they've got to be centered inside this graphic image right here, right? So what i got to do is I want to create another little graphic that's inside this one right now. And I'm going to kind of make it so it's borderless. There's no border and it's white, right? Um, let's actually add a border of CCC, right? This gray border so we can see it. I'm going to zoom in there for a second. Okay, it's not quite aligned properly, right? Let's us kind of make it so that it aligns right. There we go. So it's kind of the borders in there. And just to make it clear, you know what? Mm, Maybe instead of making it that, we'll make it black so we can see this is the difference between ones. This is where my object is going to be. And instead of like a fully, a solid border, I can make it so that it's dashed. So make a basic. There we go. Okay, so making kind of a, so this is where my object is going to be. This is where it's going to be. I'm making it dashed so you know this is where it's going to come up. Right? This is the area that and you're not going to see the dashes, obviously. This is just a this is my border, right? Now here's the problem. It's 64 wide by 46 high, right? Hmm. That means the maximum I can make it is 64 by 64. Right? This graph, this actual image is much bigger than that. So let's do that. Let's make it so that it's 64 high. Okay, and let's see what it looks like. So now this is the square we're talking about, right? And that looks about even, right there. So that is where my each of my graphics is going to be. And I know now that the maximum size of my graphics can be 64 by 64. I can't put a bigger image in there, right? Because that's not going to fit in my slot and on the reels. These, is my, this is, these are my reels, right? <sighs> so this is my image size. Okay, cool. I know it's 64 by 64, right? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to File, New. I'm going to create a new canvas that's 64 by 64. Right? And I'll make some placeholder images. Right? There's 64 by 64. That's how big it's going to be. Right? I'm going to write some text in there. Like blank. Right? So I know that's the blank that's going to come up. Now you are not going to put blank in there. You're going to leave it blank. Right? I'm putting it in there so we know it's a blank. Right? That came up. Right? You might put some other symbol in there. Like if, you're, if you make a, I don't know, a superhero game, it could be the villain like this. Right? So you know you've lost. Or some kind of like, you know, if you're making a pirate game, it would be like Skull. <laughs> you know, something like that. It doesn't have to be blank. That's pretty boring, right? Um, yeah. In real life, it's about 65. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm 65 different positions, right? Um, the, the wheel could have as much as 150 positions, right? Total symbols might be seven or eight, right? With a majority being blanks, right? 40 to 50% of the wheel is blank, right? Why? When it spins down, you're going to get a blank, chances are, 50% of the time, for sure, right? Because otherwise, if you get more of the symbols, you'll win. The slot machine people don't want you to win. They want you to lose your money, right? So they make half the wheel blank. And the other half the wheel is full of symbols, right? So... And the symbols, if you think about this, three, three wheels with potential of getting blank, chances are you're going to lose every time, right? Well, 90% of the time, you're going to lose the 10% margin, approximately. And you're not going to win big, chances are. It's very rare that you're going to win big. Okay, so here's my blank. 
this is what's going to be my, my symbol. I'm going to use this as a placeholder so we can actually do something that works today, right? So we're getting to the point where uh, if I don't do something soon, you guys are going to get bored out of your mind. We're going to take a break soon too, right? So here's blank. I'm going to make my, my symbols. And if you notice, going back to my code, right, going back to my code, and I use the code for this final version of my stuff. If I go to my game.ts file, no, I'm not going to upgrade my, my version. No, thank you. Not right now. Um, if you look at my code, I have a bunch of different symbols that come up. Um, let me show you the symbols. There they are. A blank, a grapes, banana, orange, cherry, bar, bell, and seven. So those are the, 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 the symbols. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight symbols. Okay, so, and one of them is a blank. So I've got my first one. So blank, file, save as. This is my blank placeholder, so I'm gonna call it blank. And there's different ways of calling it, like a blank symbol. Maybe I'll call it symbol or blank, uh, you know, uh, whatever object, but let's call it symbol for now because that's a it's a symbol that comes in my in my slot machine. Okay, it's my placeholder image, right? Blank. Uh, I think the next one is uh, grapes. So we'll kind of rename this grapes. And with this, I'm going to obviously recenter it. So it's each because each symbol is going to be slightly different in size. File save as uh, grapes symbol. Again, you would download them from the internet. You would find ones that are 64 by 64 wide, download them, and put them as, as actual symbols that come up. Right, right now, I'm just using I'm just using words. That's not what I want you to do. I'm just doing this so that way you can have something to so we know that the, the graphic works. Banana. And again, you would size up your symbols so that it fits in the middle. File, save as, banana symbol. So that's what I would ask you to do while I'm doing this. Uh, orange, and I'm going to put this all up on GitHub anyway. File, save as orange symbol. And cherry So again, you would replace these placeholders with real symbols. This is what I'm going to do, right? Cherry symbol. I got to make, got a bit, uh, but I got to make my because I don't have time to grab my stuff right now. My 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 different objects, bar symbol, right? Bar file save as bar symbol. Almost there. Bell and seven. Okay, uh, I can maybe I can remember that without going back and forth. Bell. Choosing my smart guys here really quickly. File save as. Bell symbol, and the last one. Bell. Seven. Right. File save as. Seven symbol. Okay, whew! Right, got all my symbols. I got all my stuff, and they're all squares, <laughs> every one of them, right? And if you look at my my project now, I've got all these these assets, right, that are going to make me have a good run. I can I can use all these assets here, right, so that I can um, I can use them as I have everything I need pretty much to make my slot machine go at this step. Um, I'm going to add them into a texture cam, uh, a, a texture, uh, an atlas, if you will. We're going to go that, do that after the break. Let's take a 10 or 15. When we come back, I'll show you how to use texture atlases with your work.